Welcome to Revolutionary Motion, where we show you tennis from a different perspective. In this video, we're going to talk about something really fun, and that is how to reach higher levels in tennis. What is the most important thing that you need to learn in order to make it easier for yourself to ascend through the levels and maybe go above 4.5, 5.0 level? And that most important thing is being unpredictable. Now that time it sounds pretty easy, but also pretty complicated at the same time. Now what, I, what do I mean by being unpredictable? It's not only that you basically roll the dice in your head every single time you're hitting a shot and you just hit whatever you, you, you know, the dice land on. Um, but instead, what you're trying to do is you're trying to disguise every single one of your actions so your opponent does not see them too early. Because the higher you go up in the levels, the more people are going to watch you on the court while you're playing and notice small discrepancies in your movements that tell them what's going to happen next. So that applies to the serve, to the forehand, to the backhand, to drop shots, to everything that you can think of in tennis. If, for example, somebody serves and on their serve, every single time they're serving from the deuce side out wide, their backswing stops with a racket being up here. But every single time they're hitting the ball down the tee, their racket points like this. Well, now as an opponent, I, I will see that. I will notice that and it, I will pick up on that within the first game or so. So that means from that point on, I always know where their serve is going to go. So in other words, I can just move up to the ball before it's even being struck. So that means I won't have as much trouble hitting the ball back. I won't be aced. Right? My opponent will not get as many easy points, free points off of their serve. And if that's just five points per match that I'm now you know, avoiding um, to lose, that means that now my opponent has to win those five points in another way in order to make up for it. And that's challenging. The same thing goes for if your opponent has great drop shots. But every single time they go up to the drop shot, they're moving up to the ball already like this. I know the drop shot's coming. Right? They could now fake me out and just, you know, hit through the slice, but most people don't do that. So if they change their racket or their grip from, you know, a semi-western grip to the slice or drop, drop shot grip in their case, too early, I will start running before they even hit the ball. So now I can jog to the net and get to that ball in a good position. I don't have to run fast anymore. That means I will probably hit a winner on that ball, but it also means I'm not wasting any energy running to a ball that I can't do anything with. I will be much fresher. Even though their drop shot might be this, this far behind the net, it might be an amazing drop shot. If I see it before they even touch the ball, I will get there no matter what. You can do whatever you want, unless I'm you know, behind the fence. So that's one thing. Then obviously the forehand, it, it continues, the same exact topic. If my opponent has two different stances, one stance that's very open to get the ball cross court, and one stance that's very close to get the ball down the line. Well, guess what? When they're taking that last step, I will see where the ball is going to be hit to. So that means I'm going to start moving again before the ball is hit. So I can basically walk to every single one of my opponent's shots. That's a huge problem. And if you can't fix that problem, it's going to be very difficult for you to win against higher level players. And, that, you know, obviously some people at higher level just have amazing shots, but they don't have this ability of seeing these kinds of things yet. Right? Other people don't have amazing shots, but they have this ability, you know, perfected in their game. So that means they can now compete with much, much better players just because of this. Because if I don't know where the ball is going to go that my opponent is going to hit next, I have an issue because now I have to wait until they hit before I can start reacting. Right? I'm not proactive here, I'm reactive. And that's an issue because now I'm losing a lot of time. And time in tennis is everything. So if you're on the tennis court and you're losing one second, just think about it. It doesn't seem like much, right? But what, what can a you know, sprinter cover in one second? If you're looking at Usain Bolt, right? Usain Bolt runs, ran the 100-meter the dash in 9.58 seconds. Okay, let's round it up to 10. And now let's say you're only half as fast as that. So you can run 100 meters in 20 seconds. And I'm pretty sure almost everybody can do that that's watching these, video, these videos at least. Uh, probably even up to an age of 55 or 60 years. So if you can run the 100 meters in 20 seconds, that means every second you will run 5 meters. 5 meters are roughly 15 feet for those of you that are not so you know, familiar with the, the metric system. 
So if that's 15 feet that they can cover in one second and you're losing one second, that means if you're standing in the middle of the court and now you're taking 15 feet in either direction that you're not moving. Let's take a look, roughly 15 feet should be, let's go to the left, let's do that. So this is roughly three, six, nine, 12, 15 feet. All this distance I can now not cover. So you can see that's pretty much everywhere on the court. Now obviously one second in, in terms of tennis is quite a lot. So let's say it's just, you know, 0 0.1 seconds instead. That's still a lot because if I can now cover 1.5 feet more in either direction that I otherwise could because I'm reacting quicker because I see things earlier, I will now have the difference between, you know, covering a ball that's here or covering a ball that's on the line. So that means it's a huge difference because I can now cover the whole court. So losing these 0.1 seconds, you know, or however much it is, is a huge problem. So that means you have to figure out a way to not give your opponent that time, to take that away from them. It has nothing to do with your technique. It has nothing to do with your ability of hitting hard shots. It only has something to do with how do you prepare your shots. Do you prepare all your shots on that given side the same exact way? Do you do your backswing on the serve in a way that the trophy position always ends in the same spot, no matter if you're serving out wide or down the tee? Do you run to your forehands and set up with pretty much the same stance, or at least don't make the stance depend on where you're going to hit the ball, but rather, you know, how you can get to the ball that you're hitting, right? If that's the same, and then you have the same backswing, no matter if you hit cross court or down the line, your opponent won't be able to start moving, will lose a lot of time, and now consequently, you can hit worse shots and hit winners. Look at Alcaraz. He's an amazing forehand, can hit the ball extremely hard, which means everybody, you know, they don't know where the ball is going, they're stepping back because they want extra time. Now he disguises it, plays a drop shot, and nobody can run up to the drop shot, even though the drop shot is not that amazing many times. Sometimes it is, obviously, because he's a very high-level player, but sometimes he doesn't even need a drop shot that is, you know, bounces five feet behind the net. But he can bounce 15 feet behind the net, and still the opponent has no chance of running there. Just because they see it so late, and the distance is so great because they're expecting that hard forehand, that they don't have any chance to cover the whole court. And that's really what it's about when you're trying to ascend to a higher level. You're trying to make sure that you have more time and your opponent has less. And that happens the easiest way if you disguise your shots and don't show your opponent what's going to happen next. So they don't, they're not able to proactively move, but instead have to wait until you hit the ball, then notice which direction it's moving in, and then they move. So like that, your court now became much, much bigger because that means your opponent has to cover a way bigger distance because they don't have the time to do so early. Now here we have one point for you guys where we can clearly see what anticipation and disguising does to you in a point and how it helps you to really get the most out of your game. And um, now we have the same point in slow motion here so you can really see what happens. So here she's just hitting a deep down the line shot with a forehand. I'm moving to the ball, I'm slicing it back down the line. And then you can see how she does her backswing in a normal way and then changes towards the slice grip to play that drop shot. And that makes me move a little bit late, so now it's very difficult for me to reach that ball, which I just barely do. And then after that ball, I know I'm completely off position, so I have to back up right away. So I stop and start running before I even know where that ball is going to go but for me it's very clear it has to be a lob or a deep shot so I'm trying to sprint back and then obviously I'm just trying to do something with that ball because I'm not in a good position at all but I had to cover the whole court to do so so that made it very very challenging but it worked out. In conclusion make sure you start working on having the same backswing and the same preparation no matter where you're trying to hit the ball so you learn to not give away what you're going to do next to your opponent before it happens. And your opponent now has to react to your shots way later than they did before and you can relax a little bit and take less risks 
to win your points. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon.